with Joe. And hello everybody. Welcome back to Addictive Fishing. Today, I got my waders on. I got my GoPros in hand. I got my good cup of Joe. I got my little dog, Little. Come on, Lid. And we got these things on top of the truck. See if you can throw some guests. Let's see a couple comments on what you think we're fishing for today. It's raining like hell, but we got all the ambition in the world and all the time in the world to go out and find us a Chinook salmon from the bank today. So this is gonna be a, a really fun adventure. I'm gonna go fish a river that I've never got one from the bank before and see if we can pull this amazing meal together. Again, spring Chinook salmon, if you guys haven't heard, are an amazing fish. We talk about it all the time. It's probably one of our favorite fish to actually catch and eat in the world. And luckily this time of year and this year, it's been good fishing. So we are on our way to beautiful places and to a good meal. Ready, little? And it's gonna be a fun day, so stick around everybody. Thank you for being here. Let's go have some adventure. Okay, I've made a last minute game time decision. I'm bringing back Bendo. I couldn't help myself. It's still early in the morning. The bite's been good. I'm guessing the river's gonna be a little busy, but I'm grabbing the Bendo. I can sit in the back of the truck, worst case scenario. Hopefully nobody will take it, but this could be really cool. I think what I'm gonna try to do is float a short little area of river. Um, so that one I can kind of sneak into uh, and then fish a lot of water without having to wade up and down the bank. It could be a perfect little scenario here. So let's get this thing in there. Let's get the bendo back. She's feeling fishy today. She wants a fish. Yes. Good idea, Jordan. We're bringing bendo back. Yep. Uh. I forgot my wallet. Let's see some comments below on the last time that you guys forgot your wallet or you guys or gals forgot your wallet or purse at home. Went on the way to a fishing trip. It is one of the most frustrating things, especially when you're starting it at 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but as I always say, the fish don't bite until we get there. So we're gonna have fun no matter what. And I'd rather fish behind a lot of people than in front of a lot of people. Um, because then you're hurrying, you're not taking your time to fish the hole, you're not fishing your baits correctly, you're not doing a lot of things right when you're in a hurry. So I'm gonna make sure I'm not in a hurry today and it's again, pretty obvious that I'm not. But I wanted to stop and see if they had sand shrimp at the store. The mystery is now for this video is, are they gonna have sand shrimp? Let's see some comments below on whether you think the store is gonna have sand shrimp for me today. Because sand shrimp can be vital to catching fish sometimes, um, especially with a really finite, fishing opportunity like spring chinook salmon you can only keep one a day you can only fish them on about two rivers right now around here and so it makes it very very detail oriented like you want to make sure you're using your time the most effectively so back to the drawing board plus i don't have my license on me and i can't go fishing without my tag so so that when i do catch one because i have confidence today that i'll be able to tag the dang thing so on our way back home Of course I left it clear upstairs. I would. Or I'm guessing it's in my pocket or it's in my pants. Or it's in my pants. Pants? Huh. Right next to everything else I didn't grab. Okay, we're on our way. Next stop, sand shrimp. Let's do it. What up dude? Are they in there? Yeah. Oh they're in there! Sweet. Well, psych out number two. Forgot a life jacket. So, back to the house. Oh, little, really? What'd you say? What's going on? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Forgot the garage door open. Okay. Oh. Well, glad you're comfy, bud. Away we go. Okay, we have made it. I'm gonna do a little covert launch here. I might put my beanie on. It is a freaking. Oh yeah? What else do you think? I'm gonna beanie up, because it's freaking pouring out there. This is gonna be a super soaker of a day. My goodness. Okay. Hoods up. This is gonna be wet. 
River looks a little blown out. Not bad though. I've seen it much higher. The speed is nice. The, the turbidity is a little off, but it could actually work in our favor for twitching uh, and for the bobber fishing with eggs. So let's get this boat launched. I'm gonna only float a little section here. So I might actually leave little man just so he's not miserable out there in the rain. I don't know. Plus I don't wanna make him walk back. We're gonna either hitchhike or be walking back to the boat and the truck. We're just be doing these little covert floats all day. So I'm gonna fish my favorite spot today, right now. See if it works. Who knows? Let's go try. You okay chilling or you want to go? You want to go? Well, just kidding. Can't leave this kid out of anything. He demanded to go. Right there, yep, you're good. Looks like we're good to go. First ever salmon mission in the SS Bendo. I have a good feeling about this, ladies and gents. I really do. As long as I don't fall off this ledge to start, we're starting off pretty good. Okay, onward, little. There it goes, everyone. SS Bendo mission. We're really only fishing two holes here. I'm not gonna go very super far um, into this process here. I'm gonna basically just stick right around these next couple holes so that I can hike back to my truck, run back and pick my boat back up and uh, be effective that way. Just keep moving around. Just gonna go right across over here, tie my boat off and go to fishing. So this is gonna be a pretty sweet little operation. I'm actually kind of proud of myself right now. I'm gonna be able to like work through this tail out, make up my baits here, and adjust you guys a little bit so that I can get my stuff set out here without making too big of a mess. Got the live sandos. These things are crawling all over the deck. Got my good baits of eggs here. I knew we want these ones. These things are gonna try to run away on me. Maybe I should just have one out at a time. Get a few baits ready here. Side of the river is all I did just now so I can get a little bit better cast at this my plan is basically to egg fish every hole and then twitch through it maybe throw some spinners in that fast water down there there's one hole in particular a little bit lower below me here that I'm gonna back bounce um, and I'm just gonna kind of feel it out I'm gonna see if I might just hitchhike and go a little bit further down river than I expected um, just to, and then maybe try to get a ride back from somebody I don't quite know yet um, but the idea is to just cover some good water. This is where I caught all my fish the other day. So in that case, I'm using my, my brains and I'm going back to the same area and fishing relatively the same style and presentations. Um, even though the water has come up, I think there's something about the, about the way the fish are staging in this area right now. And in particular, this hole, um, where there's a certain reason that they're actually stopping here and they're actually slowing down. And that's why people are getting them because the fish are here. So I haven't seen any action yet though. I haven't seen them rolling. I haven't seen them moving around. So this is a good way to cover a lot of water if they are moving around. Those linear presentations like a bobber and stuff can be a little bit null and void sometimes when you get high water because you're only fishing one line and there's so much room for the fish. You gotta use those spinner presentations and these, and these kind of twitching presentations to get in front of those fish and really kind of draw a bite. But in just a sec here, I'm gonna move down just a few feet, get a few more good bobber drifts through there.
actually got a few twitches through feel good about it back to my bobber this time i'm gonna put some tuna on there i got some tuna belly that we saved from a a, a trip that we actually filmed our first ever tuna trip we only caught a couple of them but nevertheless i got the bellies from them and uh see if they come in handy on an old food change challenge say that five times fast food change challenge food change challenge whatever I'm doing nice beta eggs well, these ones are actually cured in our addicted brine i'm gonna do a big piece of big chunk of tuna on there now uh, let this let this cast go without a sando on it. Sorry, Mr. Sandshrimp. We're not leaving you out. We just got to try something. <laughs> oh, son of a! Oh, that was a drainsky poo. As I attempt my next magic trick, I'm taking my twitching jig off and I'm putting my pink spinner on. It's a very, very pink spinner day. I don't know why. Something is just telling me pink spinner is the go-to. And I love this spinner for spring chinook. I've caught a lot of spring chinook on this exact spinner itself, actually. So hopefully we hold on to this one. I'm just gonna use my twitching rod. That way I don't have to switch back and forth to a bunch of stuff. Um, but I'm going to swing this thing through here and see what I can make happen. Oh, instant smolt right out of the gate. Okay, you can see the panic in my face, everybody. Somebody just left the hole I've been waiting for this whole time. So I'm jumping in, threw my rods down, I'm jumping in, I'm getting down there. Let's go. Hey, I made it. I made it. I made her. I tow made her out here. Sweet. Come on, Tynster, let's go. Can get out. Nice moose. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna bobber fish it first, I think. Give myself a reason to get excited. And then I'm gonna go to back bouncing. And then I'm gonna twitch. And then I'm gonna do it all over again. I'm gonna stay here for a while. My plan, really my plan was to try to get one in this hole. I really don't have a whole lot of confidence anywhere else. This works out really good for my shuttle. So it's kind of a last stretch effort to get one on this little float. Because if not, I'm gonna have to leave this spot and re-put in, re-float, unless I hitchhike, I don't know. But sometimes coming out with no plan whatsoever is what gets you in the fish. Because you don't know what you're going to do. You're, you're diverse. You don't stay on one float and only go where you had an idea of going. You go where the bite is telling you to go or where people are telling you to go. Okay. switch up something I haven't done yet and it is the back bounce I'm gonna do the same kind of deal that I was doing that I've done out of the boat you guys have seen a few episodes where I'm back bouncing out of the raft or um, even out of the, the jet boat it's one of my very favorite ways to fish so I'm gonna go two ounce lead on my back bounce setup and I'm gonna stand at the pinnacle of this island right here and I'm gonna try to back bounce down into that hole I think it's I think it's gonna work I feel pretty freaking good about it I'm not gonna lie I'm excited. That's kind of what I've been thinking about all day. This is the spot I've been, I've been waiting for. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. Two ounce lead. Let's get me some bait cut up here. I'm going to go half a sando. I'm going to go with a smaller bait here because there is so much water movement. There's so much stuff going downhill right here that I don't want to get overkill on the size of my bait and, and be getting pulled through that area more than I want to be. 
the shrimp on first this time. Egg on bottom. The Arnold shrimp and egger. Hell yeah. That dog will hunt. That dog will hunt. Let's go. All right, weight seems perfect. We're getting a really nice drift down in there. I'm in the zone right there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm pull it back to my sweet spot. I'm gonna let that thing fall. I don't wanna keep recasting my bait here or else it's gonna go bad. I'm gonna end up blowing that bait out really quickly because of all that force of the water. Wow, that was really in there nicely. I just got smoked by something in there, everybody. You couldn't probably see the rod tip, but I had it up high. It's working it, working it, working it. Mm. Super, super hard smack. So I'm going to rebate, re rig, get something stinkier on there. I'm going to get it right back in that tail out. That could be a good thing. That felt very fishy. And then as soon as that happened, a bunch of smolt started jumping out of the water, oddly enough, and the very far back into the tail out, like, like a salmon or something had just moved in. So let's see here. Loaded up, we're ready to go. One more rack. What a bad little outfit, huh? Bad A. Bad to the bone. B -b 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 bad. Okay, let's go find some new water. Two very boring minutes later. Okay, so for my next experiment, I'm basically just gonna row myself across the river at a good hole, a spot I've caught fish before. I don't know a lot about this river, um, and I don't bank fish it often, but I came up river quite a ways. I'm gonna try to get across the river and get to a good vantage point on the spot that I wanna fish and hopefully, 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 we will make the hat trick of the last few videos of me getting some springers, which is a very hard thing to do and I'm super proud of it. And it, granted, everybody's a hero with a one fish limit, but the thing is that that's why it's a one fish limit is because fishing has been very hard the last few years and I wanna make sure these fish come back. Um, but I have been doing a good job of getting my one. And so I hope today I can continue that because I have a super good recipe for you guys at the end of this one. If not, I have a plan B backup recipe as well. So stick around for it. There's going to be some cooking on the episode, of course, as always. Good fishing, good weather, sunny now. Let's see if we can get one. Okay. Let's do it again. Oh, stay. Stay there. That's the worst spot. This party started here. All of it is we got a rising river and it's crazy how at times when you're fishing a river that's rising like you can see kind of behind me you can almost feel it it's it, there's like a static in the air like an electricity in the air where you can just feel the river starting to grow and it's getting more powerful you're watching these surges of water start getting pushed up off the bottom and into these weird spots you start seeing debris in the water and you can just even if you just sit and watch the bank and areas you'll see that water start to go up and up and up so Honestly, as, as I rode across here, I could tell how much volume and how fast that water was moving. And I'm looking at this, this hole I wanted to fish from this side now, and I'm not liking it. I, I don't really want to waste my time fishing areas. I might just keep going higher on the river system because these fish are going to move. They're going to be on the move. They're going to be swimming forward up river. And I don't want to be stuck on this rock here as this river keeps growing. And it definitely is. You can just feel that power pushing down river. You feel the power, Little? You feel the power? Ow! He feels the power. Well, I think unanimously, me and Little both decided we should go to the other side of the river. Let's get back over there. Damn. Damn, Little. To where I was when I thought I was alive.
Well, I'm getting rained out. Obviously, everything's starting to fill up. A lot of debris in the water. And I'm soaked. I didn't come down with my freaking rain jacket like an idiot. So maybe we'll try one more hole. Let's get back to the truck. At least get a coat on, which is ridiculous. It is such a gnarly day. It was just sunny. I like rewind to the last clip. It was just sunny. And now I'm freaking soaked. Ugh. Okay, well we made it home from the river. It was absolutely gross out there. It got to the point where I couldn't take it anymore, guys. So I'm back now and I'm gonna do a really, really interesting recipe for you. I already got it all set up. Here's a little, just a little teaser for uh, another video that you guys are gonna have to watch. Let's just take a, let's just admire for a second this freaking amazingness. Okay, we're gonna put that back now. That's all you guys get. Okay, I'll show you one more leg. I'll show you one more loin. Now that's a heck of a loin. Some springers that I caught in my kayak. What we're gonna do next here is I'm doing a leftover salmon nacho. And it's nacho ordinary nachos, if that makes any sense. Sounded good. Um, so I have some leftover salmon here. I have all my ingredients for nachos. I have some queso, and I'm gonna whip this up and do a badass little dinner for myself. Um, Cause you know what, sometimes we gotta be real. We can't get a Springer every time we go, and I've been having really good luck lately, and I've been getting Springers on all the episodes, but today was not one of those days. I didn't get my fish, but it just shows you we're all humble out there, and we all work hard for fish. In certain days, the conditions kick your butt, the fish kick your butt, and you just don't come home with a fish in your hand, but that's okay because luckily the creator has blessed me with more fish than I could even eat the other day, and uh, we're going to make the most of that and have an amazing dinner, so let's get this thing started. All right, so the way this is gonna go, I'm just gonna go my leftover salmon right in the pan there. And I'm gonna add a little sustenance to it. I got some mushrooms here, some shiitake mushroom. I'm gonna leave those in pretty big chunks, honestly, so that way it kind of blends together with the fish. It's gonna add a nice little bite. Not exactly the most common thing to put on, uh, on a nacho, but honestly, this is a Northwest style nacho anyway, so I don't even care what you guys say. I'm putting them in there. I'm gonna go. Two green onions, because I'm gonna mainly stick those in um, after they're done here. I'm gonna go a little green pepper. There we go. That'll go really nicely with that, add a nice fresh flavor. Maybe just a skosh of cilantro to get that kicking. And into the pan we go, onto the fire. Got a little bit of butter in there. A little bit of taco seasoning for flavor. We're gonna let that simmer all together. And then we're gonna add a secret ingredient. Boom, boom. Yeah, baby. I think what I'm gonna do too, everybody, is I'm gonna add a little bit of salsa in there. Give that a little bit of something to fry in. It'll give it a nice, nice neutral taste. Any kind of tomato goes really well, in my opinion, with salmon something about it just really neutralizes the flavor. It's got a very highly acidic, obviously. It goes nice with that fat. Oh, that's looking good. It's looking good, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Get that real one. There. Got my favorite one, guys. I'm going to go into the pan here. I'm gonna take these bad boys and toss them in the toaster for a few seconds. I'm gonna warm those chips up. Make sure it doesn't burn. Now, here comes the magic, everybody. In goes the queso. I'm not gonna go crazy on it at first. Can't, once again, you can't take it out. You can only put it in. So. That on the low simmer, let that stuff heat up, kind of blend together. And then once my chips are ready to go, I might add a little cheese to them. It's gonna seem a little weird once again, but I got my aged white Tillamook cheddar. And I'm doing that in honor of the Northwest theme of this meal. Let's we'll see some comments below already of what you guys think of this. I know it's gonna taste good because I can smell it right now. I know you guys can't smell it like I can. Um, I wish you could. Let's give it a little taste. 
Mmm. Mmm. Phenomenal. One would think, I mean, most cheese and most salmon goes well together. Um, but I would never really given nacho cheese the, the credit that it might need, the, the con queso, if you will. Uh, and it's delicious. Look at that. It would almost make a good sandwich, honestly. Mmm. Okay. Let's see if I can get these out without burning myself. Close. Now we're just going to layer that right on top, like so. Hit this thing with a little bit of grated white cheddar on top. Should add very nicely to the flavor of that fish. And there we have it, everyone. Leftover salmon nacho. Nacho! Tell me what you think. Let's see the comments below. Almost forgot a very important part. The cilantro. A little cilantro on top for decoration. Maybe a little bit of green onion. One of my favorite. Okay. And there we have it, everyone. Leftover salmon nachos. Let you guys sit down at the table with me here. We'll enjoy this beautiful meal. Mmm. Yummy. Okay, first initial bite. Mmm. Man, that's good. Doesn't really taste like salmon even. Has a very fresh flavor to it. And the nice part I'm liking already about this recipe is it doesn't really make your chips soggy. It's not a runny cheese. I mean, I got some onion, I got some mushroom, I got some fish. Mmm. Mmm. That was a good piece of mushroom. Goodness gracious. I did myself this time. Well, everyone, one more recipe for the cookbook. And I think that one's gonna be a keeper. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video today, even given we didn't catch any fish, but I think it shows the real side of spring Chinook fishing, where there's days you get your butt kicked, you don't get fish, but luckily we make the best of it anyway. So if you guys wanna see more fun videos just like this one, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on for me. Please hit the thumbs up so this video gets out there and comment below and you'll be the comment of the day, just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching everybody. You stay fishy, we'll see you out there.